You are listening to Crosstalk. A safe place to discuss addiction, recovery, harm reduction, and everything in between. Support for this podcast comes from the Kentucky Opioid Response Effort and Advocates of Recovery. Content and production by the team at Turning Point Recovery Community Center. Now, buckle up and get ready for the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Crosstalk Recovery, a uh, recovery podcast that we started here. It's brought to you by Four Rivers Behavioral Health and Turning Point. Um, my name is Matt Lewis. This is Sam Peterson. Hey, everybody. Sarah Tinsley. Hello. And, uh, you know, I just want to tell you a little bit about what we plan to do here at uh, Crosstalk Recovery. Uh, we're a recovery podcast that supports all forms of recovery. Uh, whether it be AA, NA, CA, Smart Recovery, which is self-management and recovery training, uh, MARA, which is medication-assisted recovery, uh, DTR, dual diagnosis recovery, uh, YPR, uh, you know, young people in recovery, and CR, which celebrate recovery. We support all pathways to recovery. Whatever works for you, we encourage it, support you, and and wish you the best. Um, we were going to dive into topics and tools related to all these programs uh, and have a cast of characters on here ranging from turning point staff like these guys and myself to special guests on here to discuss different topics, promote recovery related events and happenings and to give experience, strength and hope based on their experience in addiction and recovery and what works for them. Uh, We plan to have fun while we do this and laugh while realizing the seriousness of this disease and the truth about the struggle to succeed and live a happy, healthy life. So that's kind of about what we're, our goal is for this podcast and what we want to do. It uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, myself, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I, uh, um, I was a hardcore heroin and alcoholic who was out there for 30 years, in and out of jails, uh, before I get, ended up almost dead in a hospital and went to my first rehab, um, which was Center Point Recovery Center for Men. And uh, I was done when I went in there and ready for something different. And actually took advantage of the opportunity to work the program. And somewhere along the way, something changed. It started working for me. Um, and I decided to stay in peer mentor. And then ultimately to come down here and work at Turning Point. Because it's all about giving back and helping other people. For me today, can't keep what you have without giving it away. And that's where I'm at today. Um, I'm living a happy, healthy life. And um, I've been, I worked a AA program. But I'm supportive of all kinds of uh, all the programs, and uh, that's what I got here. Uh, Sam, what brought you here, bud? Uh, you know, uh, well, I guess how I got here was uh, meth and heroin addiction. You know, mm-hmm. landed me in rehab up the road at the same place that, uh, that Matt went through. Just like just like Matt, I also went through treatment there and stayed peer mentored and came to work here. I just did it a little bit better because I am the lead peer support at Turning Point. <laughs> <laughs> it's funnier the second time. <laughs> well, I had a little bit of time to prepare. If if y'all are wondering, this is the the not our first take because somebody forgot to hit the record button button earlier, <laughs> and uh, so we're enjoying that. But uh, you know, I like to have fun, and I love working at Turning Point. It's a it's a great place for people early in recovery, late in recovery, just people in recovery. This community center for anybody who is a person in recovery, like any of us. And uh, it's a blessing to get to help people every day. And of course, you know, depending on no matter what program you work, there's something there for you. And that's what I love about it. It's for everybody. Um, I am truly grateful today that I no longer have to to get up and search for meth and heroin. You know, that is why I continue to do this is because it's just so much better. And I get to have do fun stuff with the guys and girls that work over there. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Glad Thank you're here. <laughs> Sarah, what, what brought you here? Um, well, like everybody else, meth and opiates for the most part. Um, I started using when I was 13. Um, I got sober when I was 30, but I went through every rehab, and I think I've checked in like 20-something times. Um, got a little bit of something from every one of them, but in the end, I went to a faith-based program here in Paducah called Ladies Living Free, and that's what ultimately... Uh, helped me stay sober. I stayed in transitional living um, for quite some time. I think that was a big part of it. You know, um, you go to work there, and I like that. I knew how to do rehab. I could do rehab all day, but what I couldn't do was real life and hold a job and pay my bills. And um, Ladies Living Free taught me how to do that. So, 
And I love working at Turning Point because I get to help people um, that are in the same boat that I was and uh, see the light come back on in people's eyes, you know, after they go to treatment. When they come in, they've got, you know, 30, 60 days. So. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, today, I think we're going to talk a little bit about motivation. Um, I know we all start out with some form of motivation when we come in to start to get sober, uh, and it's different for everybody. And I think somewhere along the way, those motivations change. I know for me, uh, I came in motivated to be healthy again because I was about dead. Uh, I was motivated to to get sober. Um, at first, you know, I just thought I'd get sober and, you know, go back out on my own and I, I'd be okay once I dried all the way out because I was I still had the shakes for the first two months of rehab. Uh, so I wanted to get past that and somewhere along the way in that, that motivation started to change. Uh, it wasn't just for, you know, to get to dry out and to, you know, be better for my son and my family, but... Um, ultimately it became to where I was motivated to do it for myself because I wanted something better. And, uh, you know, that's, I mean, that was where my motivation come from. And I think for everybody it shifts and I, I'm, I encourage everybody and I'm supportive of everybody, whatever level of motivation you're at, whatever gets you to start doing something different, it's fine. You know, I think it is important at some point along the way to, do it for yourself and and not put it on everyone else because I've a lot of I've seen a lot of people do it I'm doing it for my kids but that's never been enough for a lot of people you know um but whatever gets you in the rooms you know ultimately I think is is the important thing uh Sam what was your motivation starting out and what is it today I, I mean when I, I, I have I'm, if I'm telling the complete truth when I first got to rehab, I just wanted to get the probation, parole, mom, and everybody off my back. You know, um, I knew if I continued down the path, I was going to either die or, or get locked back up again. And, you know, I don't know if any of our listeners have been locked up before, but, you know, that's not fun. Uh, you know, it, homelessness, couch surfing was starting. So I knew I had to do something different. You know, once I went to the Fuller Center and then on to Center Point, you know, it didn't take long for that transition. Once, once the heroin withdrawals, you know, uh, opiate right. withdrawals subsided, it didn't take long to realize that I never wanted to feel like that again. And that's when I really started putting in some effort. And I think that's it's that way for a lot of people. You know, uh, I mean, I do it today because the the motivation today is I just enjoy my life so much more more than I ever have, and that's that's what really keeps me going every day. It's just a better way to live, point blank and simple, and. Uh, it's nice to wake up in the morning and not need a substance to get out of the bed. It's nice not to have one to go to sleep. And it's, you know, it's just, I don't depend on chemicals today to, to enjoy. Even if you can say enjoy, just to be able to exist in life, I guess. And, and the motivations today, you know, it switches over time, though. You know, but at some point in time, you have to do it for yourself. You know, it's, it, you can start out anyway, but some point in time you have to get sober for you i think or clean so that's what this is what drives me today thanks sam sarah um mine's just like everybody else. well the probably the first 10 times i went was for my mom or my parents you know <laughs> absolutely um, <laughs> uh, just for somebody to feed me in a warm place to lay my head you know and uh, after that it became about you know about court about probation and parole um i was shocked out the last time to Ladies Living Free, so when you hear that, you know, that your time completely restarts, uh, that got my attention real fast, and, um, you know, I just didn't really have any intention of staying sober, um, I, I just wanted to get everybody off my back and get it where, you know, I could walk paper out, um, but then I started getting things back, I thought my life was just broken, like, beyond repair, like, my parents, my kids, uh, it, anything, um, was, was just gone, I thought there was no getting any of it back, and, um, you know, I started to regain a relationship with, with my mom and dad. I um, started being able to see my son and, you know, noticed that he enjoyed being around me. Um, I got my license and a car back, eventually got a hat, just little things. So just like everybody else today, I do it because this is so much better, you know. Um, I can't really imagine living like that anymore. I remember it and I know that I did, 
but to be sitting here today, I just didn't ever think that life the way it is today was possible, you know, and how you could ever, ever turn back from that. There's just no high in the world that was worth that kind of misery, you know, and um, my relationship with God is, is what got me to where I'm at today, and it, it's probably my main motivation for staying sober. Awesome. Yeah, uh, having fun in sobriety was uh, it's hugely important for me. I mean, I thought it was going to be boring and nobody was going to be doing it because nobody I was was doing it. And, you know, coming into the, the rooms and being able to laugh again for the first time for in a long time and realize that you can have fun sober and, there's a, and, and remember it, you know, <laughs> and not have to worry about making an ass of yourself or, you know, going to jail or not remembering it at all, you know. No, it's the delusion. You know, yeah. I thought I was having fun. I don't right. I don't know that I ever really was. You know, my brain still tries to paint, paint this pretty picture. But, you know, when I sit and think about the bars and stuff back in there, I was either getting thrown out of them in the bathroom, right. sick. I mean, it was – that fun was – it just doesn't seem so appealing now that I know what fun in sobriety is. Right. You know, with friends that actually get up the next day and like, hey, man, that was a good time. And yeah, care of, about you, not trying to manipulate you. Right, yeah. get or something of, out of your, yeah. What happened last night because you right. don't remember. Yeah. I was an isolator. I couldn't... I, I couldn't have had very much fun because I never left the house or camper or, tra- or <laughs> wherever I was at, you know, because I am... Um, it, it just made me so paranoid and socially awkward. I became just a recluse. I mean, I would go months without going to the dollar store, you know. There's no way that was fun. How much fun can you have in, you know. Um, <laughs> I have a social life today, you know. I can go hang out with friends. I can go eat. I can be around people and not be terrified of them, you know, and vice versa. Right. <laughs> I mean, is he going to hear this? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm giving him yeah. something to edit out, you know. Yeah. It was because of how handsome he was that I was intimidated, and he knows this. Now that, you know, it's not as bad. <laughs> well, He has no pores know, on nice his save. face. No pores. <laughs> you anyway. know. But ah. your feelings are meant to be felt, Matt. They're valid. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I mean, they come from somewhere. You know. yeah, they're not always facts, though. You know? No, feelings are not facts. That, it is that a is fact true. that you feel that way. No, that's bullshit, too. That's what I always say. <laughs> 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 that's always my excuse. <laughs> no, you know, we like to pick on Brandon because, you know, he likes to be picked on. He does. Yeah. And he, does. Uh, he likes to pick back at us. And, uh, you know, I think that's the whole, how the whole thing works so well sometimes oh it's, yeah he is a really, really i know good we boss. butt heads a lot when uh, i was at center point and he was you know caseworker there or whatever the position he was he was there he was a bossy guy yeah. one of the bossy guys yeah but uh now we get along great just friendly ribbing as is this That's yes this ribbing is. is that what you ribbing. said ribbing ribbing like yeah like oh hey, well, bud, yeah like no ribs. never heard that isn't that isn't that a thing i, I I'm going to go with it is. If you want if, it to if be, If it wasn't, is. it is now. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, I'm old, so all my terms are... <laughs> is that the what Middle they called ages. it back in your day? He's going yeah. to throw out to get, Fist- in, the, Fist- get in the old fisticuffs. fisticuffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that either. Well, that's the old style boxing with the... Uh, oh, right, yeah. right. Yeah. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction or in recovery and needs guidance... Speak with Turning Point's team of peer support specialists by calling 270-444-3621. You are not alone, and we are proof that recovery is possible.